Welcome to the Roman Forum, which is one of the largest collection of ruins from ancient antiquity that you can find anywhere around the world. It contains a few different areas. Right now, we're going to walk through the Roman Forum so you can see in full 360 video look in any direction you would like because these ruins are really well worth kind of seeing every single detail so feel free to watch this video as many times as you would like. The other two parts of this kind of complex of ancient ruins is the Colosseum as there's also a 360 video on that and Palatine Hill. Also right next to Palatine Hill is the Capitoline Hill which houses the Capitoline Museum. Let's walk through these ancient ruins, kind of a speed walk through. Feel free to look around in any direction you would like. Now, the Roman Forum, you can think of it as kind of um, the civic center of ancient Rome. If you've ever been to New York City, you've probably been to the civic center, which is right by the Brooklyn Bridge. And there's these uh, huge buildings of the Supreme Court, and there's a bunch of other kind of official governmental buildings. That was the Roman Forum but also combined with markets, combined with casual meeting places, also maybe a few taverns and a few stores. Later on during the Roman Empire, it became more of kind of purely for official business and also for worship of the gods and the, pan the huge pantheon of gods, including the deified emperors themselves. Now some of these stones, a good majority of them, are actually original stones that were here since ancient Roman times. So we're walking on ancient Roman flooring. And we're seeing, for example, the Ark over here that dates back all the way to about 200 AD. Let's take a closer look at it. So here in the Roman Forum, you can use a guide or you can watch my live video on the full history of the a few spots here. But you can also read from these signs, which is amazing. So this is the Ark of Severus. And Severus was the father of Caracalla. Now Severus was known for pre being a pretty good emperor, but Caracalla on the other hand was not. Caracalla brutally murdered his younger brother, Geta. His brother was only about a year his junior, and he murdered him as they were doing a truce meeting where their mother was mediating. Caracalla ordered the soldiers to come rushing in and murder Caracalla, and uh, murder Geta in cold blood right as he's laying in his mother's arms. Caracalla subsequently established Damnatio Memori, which means killing all the memory of Geta. And you can see evidence of that right here in this Ark of Severus, because the Ark of Severus had the entire family of, uh, of Severus, including Geta, Caracalla, and his mother. There's figures missing. Those figures that are missing, like this one over here, maybe we'll find a few more. But right down there, there's another one missing. And then over there, you see a missing part of the words. Those words are removed. You see dotted lines up there. The 360 camera might not be capturing it, but that's where the letters were removed. Gita's name was removed and then later changed to another uh, version of the letters, and then Gita's face was also removed. So Gita's trace and memory was absolutely forgotten to history, so much so that people barely know what Gita looks like. Caracalla ended up having a very terrifying reign as emperor. He was extremely strict, uh, ruled with an iron fist, but not well at all, and he was killed while taking while doing his business in the middle of the forests of Pathia. 
murdered by one of his centurions. Here's the Basilica of Julia. Now, the Basilica of Julia is probably the, one of the largest buildings that used to remain here. They used to reside here in ancient Roman times. And Julia is the daughter of Augustus, who was exiled for a few years after she apparently committed adultery on her husband, Tiberius. Tiberius and Julia never really got along. And Julie also did not get along with her adopted mother, who was Livia. Now you'll notice that it's called Basilica Julia. So the word Basilica comes from ancient Roman times. So everything you're looking at here is more than is more than nine, 1,900 years old. A lot of it is 2,000 years old because this is, was the oldest part of the Forum. The newest part of the Forum was across the street, right behind the markets of Trajan. And a lot of these columns is kind of a miracle that they're still standing. However, one such column that was restored later on in the 1930 was the columns of the Temple of Vesta. And right up there you're seeing Capiline Hill, the home of the Capiline Museum. One of the seven hills of Rome alongside with Palpatine Hill. Two hills. Palatine Hill, I mean. Palpatine is the, is the emperor for um, Star Wars. No coincidence there that he's called Palpatine. Palpa. Palpa. The Pope himself is called Pontifex Maximus. Pontifex Maximus was the title of the Roman emperors. You can think of Christianity as more closely aligned with ancient Roman beliefs than even the Judaic beliefs that uh, the religion is supposed to come from. Let's walk this way. This is a brisk walk because I want to make this 360 video long, but feel free to rewatch it. It's a little bit more, more of the essence. This is the uh, Roman Forum, the home of the Roman Forum, which was where Julius Caesar had to convince the senators to give him the dictatorship. First the dictatorship was for six months, and then it was for a year, and then it was for ten years, and then eventually Julius Caesar convinced the senators over here to make him dictador forever. So dictador in perpetuity. Look at this. So if you look at these buildings, you would think that this is kind of looks straight out of like the Supreme Court in the U.S. or or uh, countless buildings in, in London. But no, ancient Rome. This is the temple of Antonio Antonius and Faustina, Emperor Antonius. Truly, got to take your time because there's so much to see in uh, the Roman 
the forum, but let me show you one little room that digs into the Temple of Roma, that is the modern day uh, Basilica, uh, which we visited on a Facebook Live video. However, this room is accessible only from the Roman Forum. It has the statues, the busts of a bunch of Roman emperors. Let's take a look. So here we are, right up there is the Basilica, beautiful basilica built in the uh, ancient temple of Rome, Roma, the other side being the temple of Venus. And here we see a depiction of Saturn, one of the many gods from Rome who have been adopted from a lot of the gods that they conquered, especially the Greeks. Those make up most of the ancient Roman gods. And here is the, apparently the bust of Julius Caesar. You can see that he's balding, and he was very self-conscious of his balding because back in that time in ancient Rome, balding was kind of out of style. Uh, it was seen as kind of weak to be balding, at least from Julius Caesar's eyes. And he got so self-conscious that he started wearing a crown of laurels all the time. He was only supposed to wear it for a little, like special occasions, but he started wearing it every single day just to hide his balding spot. Roman row. Now, the ancient Romans made the most elaborate and sophisticated road system of all antiquity, more so than any other civilization on earth. So much so that these roads actually paved the way for modern day streets, modern day highways, and modern day railroad lines. And a lot of these roads are still in use. And this is one of the roads that lead out from Rome towards Carnai. benefits of being nine feet tall. So the Roman Forum is a paid entrance, 16 euro for Colosseum Roman Forum pa uh, Palatine Hill. However, if you do want to see the Roman Hill for free or want to see it before you come here, before the day you pay your ticket for. You can see it from Capiline Hill as there's a bunch of people already waiting up there.
absolutely magical. And over there we see Victor Emmanuel Monument. So Rome is very densely packed. And when the Roman Forum was in existence, one million people lived on this very city. So you can imagine the Roman Forum itself being as packed as, say, a modern-day Times Square or a modern-day Colosseum like we have today with all the tourists. Well, I've got him right there as the Ark of Titus. Now, Titus, also known as Tacitus, he built this Ark in honor of his great family, the Flavians. The Flavians rose out of the equestrian class, basically the middle class of Rome. And Vespasian, the father of Tacitus, became the emperor of Rome. Very far rise in rank, more far rise in rank than any other emperor. And Tacitus was one of the conquerors of Judea. Judea, modern day Israel, and nearby areas also uh, modern-day Jordan, and he uh, depicts his conquests. Ooh, ancient water fountain. Now, those water fountains were here back in that day. I'm not sure if that one was original, but a lot of these water fountains were uh, serviced by the aqueducts that were built here uh, since Julius Caesar's time. The aqueducts started getting very big and very uh, efficient by Hadrian's time in 200 AD. Now, Tacitus was um, followed up by his brother as well, Domitian. However, Domitian was assassinated, bringing an end to the Flavian dynasty. But by all means, there were at least Tacitus and Vespasian were known as uh, one of the five good emperors. The mission, too, to to a pretty large extent. This way is Palatine Hill, so stay tuned for a Facebook Live video of Palatine. Thank you everyone so much for watching this 360 walkthrough through the Roman Forum. And if you're watching this a month before everyone else, thank you so much for lending your support. And if you're watching afterwards, thank you so much for watching and sharing, commenting, and liking. I appreciate it. Keep being awesome, and always keep on exploring. Adivadechi, amici.